Good afternoon, everyone. This is Brent, the host for Canadians with Disabilities and Their Allies. And uh, this afternoon, we have Constance coming on, and she's going to be interviewing uh, people with disabilities on their lived experience this afternoon. Okay, I see uh, Patricia is there. I'm not sure if that's Constance in disguise, uh, but we'll, we'll first find out. How is everyone? We're fine, thank you. How about yourself? Oh, very good. I, I see that uh, Constance, but uh, it looks just like Patricia. Yes, it's a, yes, I do that all the time, Brent, so that everybody will blame her for all my mistakes. <laughs> well, it's, it's a pleasure having you on the show, Constance. Uh, thank you so much for nice coming here. on and, and, uh, and doing this uh, very important in journalist the work that you're doing. Um, it really um, it really resonates uh, really well for so many people with their lived experience and telling their stories um, and what what people what they go through on a on a day to day basis. Say eh? and so thank you again. And I have um, I have Neil uh, right here for you. There you go, Neil. Oh, we'll pass the mic over to you. Okay. Yeah, we're sharing a phone today because uh, Brent's over at my place. So. Okay, Neil, how are you doing? Good. Good. Is it the traditional spelling N E I L? N E I L, yes. Yeah. Okay. Tell me a bit about yourself, please. Yeah, that's a, I always have a hard time with uh, trying to keep it uh, keep it short. But I was born with uh, cerebral palsy, most likely due to anoxia when when I was born. You know, when when you get the oxygen cut off from the brain and it. So in my case, it affected my uh, most mostly my my legs are affected, but also a little bit my uh, my dexterity in my in my hands. So I, 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 I my writing is a bit messy, but yeah, mostly my my legs are a little bit bent. I'm 54 year old 54 year old now. I've seen a lot of change in in that time. I mean, it used to be, you know, somebody like myself, you wouldn't see. You wouldn't see somebody like myself out in the open. We don't. They don't be uh, hidden away or locked away somewhere, right? And so I remember when I was younger, I would be out in a grocery store or a mall or something, and I really wouldn't see very many people that that were like me with crutches or wheelchairs or whatever. And uh, you know, I often wondered why I didn't see anybody that older with a disability, and I. Yeah, I just thought it was kind of kind of strange, but uh, when I was uh, growing up, also it was normal for me for me to hang around just able-bodied kids because that's that's all of my neighborhood was just full of able-bodied kids. So you know, I I used to go to GF Strong, which was a rehab center to to do exercises and that, and I also went to school there t till I was seven or eight or so, and. Uh, I, it just felt weird every time I went there. It was weird because I was surrounded by crutches and wheelchairs, and and then when I would go home, I was playing kick the can with the, the neighbors. <laughs> it, it was just kind of a, a weird experience. So right from the get go, I, I I just realized the difference of of wanting to hang out with the more quote unquote normal folk, you know, and and so my parents. Uh, Transferred me to a normal school when I was uh, seven or eight. And I went, I went into grade two. I probably should have been going into grade three, but my parents wanted to make sure that I had a good, good start, so they just put me back a grade. And, and it was probably a good, good thing because I ended up doing really well. That was another thing too. I think when I first started at, at the, at the school, I think a lot of the the teachers teachers were. Um, almost afraid to call on me because they, 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 they weren't they weren't really sure if I would know the answer and and when I actually did know the answer they're like oh wow <laughs> you know and uh, <laughs> and so it, it was good so like it, it gave uh, me a lot of confidence and it gave the gave the teachers a lot of confidence that they could call on me and it, would, it was okay kind of thing that's really interesting um, are you a person can you can you walk or you're, you're with crutches and a wheelchair yeah, I, I use I use crutches, and and now that I'm I'm getting a bit older, uh, I I use my scooter more. I have a mobility scooter. Sure. Uh, so for longer distances, especially if I'm going to go shopping, like uh, grocery shopping. Yeah, but but otherwise around the house and all that, you use okay, and some crutches or something just to help. Yeah, I use uh, I use crutches around the house. Yeah, and like I said, for, for really short distances, I still use crutches. 
the last five years has been a little bit different for me too because it wasn't until I turned about uh, 49 and like I said I'm 54 now right when I turned about 49 is when I started to notice um, you know my balance was off and and I couldn't trust my legs as much and it was just kind of very sudden I mean I used to almost abuse my, myself like I, I could just yeah. kind of do do whatever I wanted and it, it didn't really bother me and yeah. then uh, right when I turned about 49 is that then I, I I started getting a lot more pushback from my legs and said oh you can't do that anymore and so I, I've had to kind of scale back my uh, physical activity for sure yeah how are you handling that yeah it's 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 okay but like I said it's, it's an adjustment because like I said I before I, I never uh, it never phased me. I could just I could just walk. I mean I would I would literally walk miles and, and it would never bother me. I, I never seemed to get tired. Yeah, and so it's a very it's a very different thing. And again, you know, I've never grown old with a disability. Like for anybody that's, that's able bodied, of course when you when you get older as you age you lose things. But I, I had I didn't know what to expect having a disability like how that would be to to age and then also have that disability on top of things and if that would kind of accelerate and it kind of has it kind now, of has so are you able bit. to do to go to physio or um, you know any of those work with the trainers to help you overcome aging? Um, it's hard now actually because uh, of course when you you only get the physio for free up until you're 18, right? And then they kind of kick you off, kick you off everything as soon as you turn 18 and when you become an adult. Then it becomes the burden of, of you as an adult to, to pay for everything. Right. So you can't, so you don't do physio because it costs money. What about working with, what about going back into the system and finding nurses and, and people to help? Through the system, through the through that way. Yeah, well, I, I will tell you. Every once in a while, I'll get a massage, and I'll do um, chiropractic. I find both of those help. The point I was making earlier is that's one thing that I wish a lot of these government officials and, and that would realize how much cost it is to keep healthy, because. Everybody that has a disability, we, we want to stay healthy and yeah. we, we want to do what's best for our bodies. And that does cost money, right? Yeah. And when once you get... Once again, once again, prevention being the better part of yeah, uh, healing. And uh, yes, yeah. Yeah, right. because the, the alternative is I get sick and end up costing the, the province yeah, like exactly. way more money, right? Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I definitely do try to do the best I can with uh, massage and chiropractic and of course eating healthy is important but again like you can only eat healthy if you have the, you the financial <laughs> to do so so um, yeah all that's a challenge so have you received disabled benefits for the duration for the whole of your life no um, I've been really fortunate actually you know as I kind of alluded to a little bit when I was younger, I really kind of did whatever I wanted to as far as I didn't really pay attention too much to to my body. Like I would pretty much abuse it. Like I, I don't mean I don't mean like I would smoke or do drugs or yeah, something like no, that. But but I would just like I would just push my push my body and, and it would never really push back and, and so I always was able to work and I, I did I spent a lot of time you know doing 40-hour work weeks and really pushing myself and and my body could handle it what for the you doing? yeah my first really big job I um, I worked for the provincial government actually as a as a provincial servant or you know a public servant and uh, my first job was uh, at the Ministry of Environment Actually, my first job was actually only been supposed to be like two weeks. It was uh, they wanted somebody to come in and kind of do um, a, a, a small database for uh, the uh, stream keepers groups, like the environmental groups that were looking after uh, streams and stuff like that, waterway. And so 
you know, I, I did that, and they were impressed, and so they kept extending me. So it went from two weeks to, like, you know, six months, to, and it went from a, a year, and then, it, you know, I, I spent, you know, seven years um, <laughs> doing, doing that. I spent about five years with the environment ministry, and then I moved on to, um, I moved on to the um, ministry of, of, of highways. Oh, wow. For about, for about two and a half years, and that was the same thing. I, I did a bunch of uh, database work for them, and it was cool because it was back at a time when computers were, were still kind of new, and and yeah, nobody yeah. and nobody wanted to do that work, right? So it yeah. made it really easy for it was like, oh, let's get Neil to do it, you know. Right. And and it's not like I nef- I didn't necessarily know exact exactly what I was doing either, but <laughs> but but they gave me, they gave me the the leeway I, to, I, I to figure it out. I started first year of university like that, not knowing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah sure. I was I was just really uh, I really like computers, so I I, I I just kind of I loved you know just throwing myself into everything and just absorbing everything, whatever I didn't know. Uh, I just learned on the fly, and especially um, learning all about you know when it was with uh, when I was with uh, environment ministry. Of course, you have to learn all about habitats and and sure. and, and waterways and all that kind of stuff. And it, and you just pick all that up too. And the same thing when I moved over to um, to highways, I got really really good at at learning everything there was to know about traffic data. You know, like measuring traffic volumes and and being able to graph it out all that kind of stuff like i started the job knowing absolutely nothing but again you just i just kind of threw myself at it and because like i said because nobody else wanted to do the job of like figuring out how to do the database stuff they just gave me the the leeway to to uh, just do what i wanted and then and i i had really cool bosses too that really gave me the the freedom to to really push myself into just keep expanding things and things like that. Very good. So yeah. there's not much wrong with the brain. I mean, that's wonderful news, really, isn't it? I mean, yeah, and, and actually that's one of the, well, that's one of the, you know, that's one of the biases or, or discrimination that you, that you faced early on. Like, again, you, I'm going back 54 years in time, and certainly when I was younger, even the medical doctors at the time, they, they would just, Assume like if you had a if you had a physical disability, of course you had a mental disability too. It was just like they, they oh, yeah. just kind of they just kind of made the assumption, right? Right. And it was only because uh, my mom was a nurse and she kept pushing back on on the doctors, and so whenever the doctors would say, you know, I don't think your son is going to ever amount to anything, she would just kind of say, that's BS. I don't, I don't believe you, kind of thing. And right. uh, yeah. So, but that that's kind of the biases that you're fighting against when you go back four decades or whatever whatever it was more more than, than that. The one thing I've noticed in all these conversations is how scattered the help is, how how divided it is. A bit of stuff there and a little bit there and something else yeah. there, and something else there. It just yeah. seems to be mutilated, and there's no. It, really, it doesn't seem to be a really common string or a common yeah. line. That is so true. It just seems it seems so chaotic, and I, I mean, I don't know much about it really because we're not involved with the money end of it yet, and you know it's never been part of my environment. I've met lots of people who are disabled, but I never had to do the the money end of any of it. So I'm yeah. I'm really furious about how difficult this is all around, and why can't it be coherent? Yeah, and and that's one of the real big challenges, like. That doesn't get enough airplay, like you said, is that when you have a disability, like there's so many things that people just have to figure out for themselves. Like there's no there's no government offices that are saying, oh, you know, here, take my hand and I'll guide you through something. Right? Well, there, there's nobody doing that. It's like uh, we all have to do it for ourselves. You know, and like, I think there's a really I think there's a really serious um, air of dismissiveness. But you, you beat it because you were not a person to be dismissed. You yeah, and that, it, that was a great thing. Yeah, and it really does help to um, have the, the parents, first of all, that that's, that right. uh, say, you know, anything's possible. And I internalized that, and, it, it, you know, that really put me on the right path, I think. 